The Red Cross played an extremely important role in World War II by assisting prisoners of war. They established both auxiliary hospitals and convalescent homes to look after the sick, especially if they needed long-term care. The Red Cross worked in accordance with the Geneva Conventions in order to establish legal safeguards for all civilians in an area where war had broken out. Despite the fact that international powers had deferred on this agreement until 1940, the Red Cross never stopped trying to access those who were arrested, deported, or sent into forced labor at the beginning of the war. Red Cross was also key in the exchange of letters between prisoners of war and their families. They, the letters were sent to the international headquarters of the Red Cross in Geneva, and from then on were sent to their respective destinations. By 1945, near the conclusion of the Second World War, 24 million messages had been exchanged. The International Red Cross was also empowered to collect all information they could about prisoners of war, such as their whereabouts, health, and other facts, in order to better serve them. Due to the devastating impact of the Blitzkrieg-style warfare employed by Germany, the work of the International Red Cross was insurmountable. They had a never-ending catalog of inquiries about prisoners of war and missing persons from the innumerable refugees that were produced as a result of Germany's occupation and invasion of many European countries including Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, and France. The International Red Cross was also instrumental in saving the people of Greece from starvation. They negotiated a deal with the occupying German forces in order to allow shipments of grain and other food products to reach Grecian people. Boats sailing across the Mediterranean Sea were allowed safe passage under the condition that they bore a large Red Cross. Once inside Greece, the Red Cross was able to set up food kitchens and were able to produce over 500,000 basins of soup in just two months, saving the people of Greece from deadly starvation. In Europe, throughout prisoner of war camps, workers from the International Red Cross were able to conduct regular inspections to make sure that prisoners were being treated correctly by their hosts. The quality of food was checked along with the medical supplies and prisoner health and accommodation. Complaints about the way that prisoners of war were being treated made it to Red Cross officials who were able to plead for their, their cases to the relevant authorities in the region. However, there were some points in the war where the International Red Cross was truly powerless to do anything about the situation. After the German invasion of Russia in 1941, the Rus there were many prisoners of war on both sides. However, the Russians refused to hand over a list of German prisoners of war, and the Germans also refused to do so either. This led to a standoff of sorts, with, which left the Red Cross feeling helpless to, to mitigate any damages that the prisoners would have suffered um, if they did indeed have to stay in under par camps. The International Red Cross even attempted to help those who were housed in the concentration camps throughout the German territory. They sent out food parcels to these few named individuals that they knew, but they slowly gathered more names over time. By the end of the war, they had a list of over 100,000 names of people being held in concentration camps and had collectively sent over 1 million parcels to these uh, prisoners. E these even went to the death camps in Poland. A Red Cross delegate stayed in each concentration camp as information about what happened in these camps became more widely known. Despite the fact that they had signed the Geneva Conventions, Japan had not officially ratified it. This meant that technically they were not bound by any of its stipulations. Unlike Germany, Japan was completely unwilling to work with members of the International Red Cross. They did everything they could to hinder operations of Red Cross members in the Pacific Theater, 
including delaying or failing to issue necessary documentation that allow the camp visit to suspecting Red Cross officials of being spies, or simply attacking members of the Red Cross on charges of trying to obtain names of interned civilians. To raise funding, the International Red Cross created and circulated a large number of propaganda posters, including the ones you've already seen, and the one here, which stresses the need for civilian populations to help the troops that are off fighting in the war by knitting socks. This inclusion of the civilian population in the war effort gave a great sense of nationalism to civilians and made them feel truly involved instead of possibly otherwise worrying about their relatives and friends that were off fighting in the war. This, along with the integration of women in factories, were one of the many things that empowered women during this era. This particular propaganda poster helps to embody the patriotism and nationalism in the U.S. at this time. Many people donated to the American Red Cross simply because they saw it as a sign of supporting our troops and hoped to feel more involved in the war effort through contributing. These propaganda posters were highly effective and were the first effective use of the modern printing press in such functions. Many civilian women did not feel satisfied with only working in factories and wanted to get more involved with the war effort. To do this, posters like this inspired them to actually sign up and work for the Red Cross. Overall, the role of the International Red Cross in World War II was a very important one. Although not optimal, they made the situation for prisoners of war manageable and made prisoners of war able to survive a lot easier than if the Red Cross had not acted as they did. Due to the nationalistic nature of America, many workers were able to be found and hired easily. This allowed the Red Cross to further pursue operations in a manner it had not been able to in World War I. The Red Cross still today functions as an international body in order to help those trapped within armed conflicts.